Let's talk about Veeam availability for Hyper-V, a solution that allows the backup and restore of Hyper-V virtual machines from the Veeam backup and replication user interface. Some of the features include application-aware image-based backup, end-to-end -end encryption, and native tape support. In our demonstration, we'll look at creating a Hyper-V backup and explore the configuration of on-host and off-host proxies. Let's go to that demonstration now. We're in the Veeam Backup and Replication Console. Let's take a look at the integration with Microsoft Hyper-V. The first thing that we're going to need to do is connect to our Hyper-V environment. If you look on the right-hand side, you can see we have two standalone Hyper-V hosts that are already connected. Let's take a look at the properties of one of them. You can see that we've got this particular standalone host DNS name and a brief description of what it is listed here. Let's click Next. There are different types of Hyper-V environments we can connect to. We can connect to Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager if you're using this to manage your Hyper-V infrastructure. We can connect to Microsoft Hyper-V Cluster. This is going to allow us to connect to the cluster and all the hosts that are within the cluster. Or, as in this case, connect to a Hyper-V standalone host. This is where we'll need to use credentials to connect to the Hyper-V environment. This will be doing the work of the backup and issuing connections as needed, so this account needs to be pretty powerful. You can select the credentials from the drop-down box or add them here. On the next page, we're able to see which specific components need to be installed by Veeam Backup and Replication onto the system. You can see it's the transport and the Hyper-V integration. Note at the bottom that this Hyper-V server will act as the backup proxy for jobs running in the on-host backup mode. There's also showing a limit of two tasks. For Hyper-V, we're able to do two types of proxies. One of them sits on the host and will be automatically deployed. One sits off host and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. The proxies are responsible for doing the work of the backups. They're actually going to be pulling the blocks of changed data in order to create our backup files and or replicas. So they're the workers in our situation. They are the data movers. The connection is already defined and we don't need to reconnect this one. Knowing that, I'm going to press cancel and then we'll exit out without applying the changes. I mentioned the on-host proxy, and I was going to show you the off-host proxy. We can deploy off-host proxies onto Windows systems, which have the same Hyper-V role as the host in our Hyper-V environment. Let me zoom up. Now, you can see there are several selections that we can choose from here. We're able to choose a specific Windows system that has the Hyper-V role installed on it. We can specify which volumes this off-host proxy is connected to. The off-host proxy does need to be connected to the same data store that has the Hyper-V role as the location where our VHD files are. We can choose if we want to change which volumes this is connected to. For the off-host proxy, you can also set the number of concurrent tasks. Task is the limit to how many VHD files we're pulling data from at any specific time. There's an option here to look at our traffic rules. The traffic rules are global traffic rules and they can exist between any two Veeam components. We can see here that a default rule has already been established. The rule states that if data is going over the internet, we want to make sure that it's encrypted. You can add extra rules between any two Veeam components by clicking on the Manage Network Traffic Rules. Now, this is a global setting and it does work across all the Veeam jobs, so it's not a job specific or com component specific feature. You can see in this case that the Hyper-V integration will be installed on the system. For a demonstration, I'm not going to fully deploy this, so we're going to go ahead and click Cancel and go back in our demo. Now let's take a look at a Hyper-V backup job. So I'm going to go here to a backup that we're going to take a look at. This is my Hyper-V job that just ran successfully. You can see the job name. You should use a name that describes what is being backed up. You can see which virtual machines are being backed up. And if we want to, we can actually add VMs to this job using container objects. For example, hosts and clusters. 
or hosts and volumes. We can even do it based off of our Hyper-V tags or our VM groups if we've defined them. So we're able to actually use these container objects. And if we use the container objects, it's going to allow us to automatically protect the VMs as they're added into the specific containers. And that makes things nice and easy for management. For the storage, we can choose which proxy is being used. In this case, it's an on-host proxy. We choose a repository, which is the destination for these backup files the number of restore points we're keeping in this chain, and we can configure secondary destinations for this job, such as tape or backup copy to a secondary repository. Now, these are configured as secondary jobs, and they allow us to follow the 321 rule, which says three copies of data on two separate independent medias, one of them being off-site. We can add guest processing and we're able to agentlessly get into the VMs, get them into an application consistent state, write what's sitting in memory onto disk and do the work of the backup so that the backup is nice and complete and very recoverable. We're going to need some credentials to get into the VMs to do that. And you can define or select those credentials here. We can choose a schedule for the protection to meet our recovery point objectives. Now let's just hit apply and finish. I wanted to highlight a couple other things as well. We're able to use the data lab capabilities in order to take the files that are sitting in our backup repository from our backup jobs and actually power on those virtual machines and make sure that they're going to be able to recover from their backups if necessary. And we can even put this compressed deduplicated backup file to work for us in an on-demand sandbox. Or if we want to, we can even power on the VMs inside that isolated environment from the backup files and actually do some changes inside the VM prior to recovering them. And this is called stage restores. Mainly meant for GDPR, however, it does allow us to make sure that things are up to date and we're recovering whole VMs from backup into production. So there's some very strong capabilities there. This is a Hyper-V job sure backup job which is the technology that allows us to do this of course we have all kinds of recoveries available so if we click on restore from microsoft hyper-v we're able to do recoveries from our backups and our replicas and we'll take a look at the backups first we're able to restore from virtual machine guest files or application items take a look at the whole virtual machines the first thing we are able to do is an instant vm recovery this allows us to take the compressed, deduplicated backup file and power on the VM within it directly without having to move the data around. We're able to do whole virtual machine restores. We're even able to build virtual machines in Amazon EC2 or Microsoft Azure based off of these backup files. We're able to restore guest files from both Windows and many Linux file systems. We're able to do application item recovery, which allows us to dive right into the backup, right into the virtual machine, and down into the application and pull out a single item, such as maybe a Microsoft SharePoint item, that was backed up using Veeam's backup and replication. Now, we're also able to do recoveries from our replicas. We're able to fail over and do failbacks fail over to that powered off copy that's sitting in that secondary location where we're able to do similar restores from guest files. And we can do these same application item recovers from the replicated VMs instead of our backups. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next demonstration.